Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science. This is module 5, Earth's Processes, and video number 12, where we're going to just review what we looked at in the previous video on moulds and introduce this idea of fossil casts. So what we had to do was to model the processes of fossil formation by examining a variety of methods of rock, including um, both mould and cast formations, and one more, which is trace fossils, and we'll look at that in the next video. So the main thing is that you can describe a cast formation to be able to contrast mould and cast formations, and we'll look at a little way of being able to contrast those towards the end of this video. And obviously, one of the important things that we're trying to do is to evaluate the significance and the use of cast fossils. So here is our slide from the previous video on fossil molds. And we said that one of the key things is we're talking about three dimensional impressions that were left, usually as a consequence of some quite um, soft soil or mud that enables the uh, fossil or at least the living organism that has then died to be preserved um, in as with as little disturbance as possible. So that as the material decays, it leaves this little impression in the, um, in the soil. Hopefully what will happen is over time we'll get pressure, we will have this uh, material turning into rock, and then occasionally we find that some of those um, impressions that have been left now as a little uh, indentation in the, what was the original mud can then be later filled in. And this idea of infilling by other minerals is the idea of how casts can be formed. Basically, fossil casts, if you like, begin their life in a similar way to the way that moulds do. And that is that we get the same sort of thing happening. The living organism dies. It sinks down to the bottom of its environment. And hopefully it's uh, rapidly buried. That's one of our key components for fossilisation. And it leaves this nice little impression uh, in the in the mud or in the uh, soil. Now, one of the problems when we're talking about the difference between fossil casts and fossil uh, molds is that the mold needs to be filled in. So instead of being hollow like a mold, the cast actually fills in all the little gaps. So now there are no gaps. What we have is minerals, which are going to obviously um, form rock that's going to take the place of the space that's created by the impression. In order for this to happen, we really need uh, our, our substrate to be more porous. So rather than being uh, more of a mud or a soft, soft kind of a soil, now we want more of a sandstone. That's, that way, more water can actually seep through um, the soil and actually bring minerals into where that um, mold has been created and so we can get uh, mineral deposits or sedimentation actually happening in that cavity that's been left by the decayed parts of the um, original organism. So now we're trying to make uh, an impression, an imprint um, come to life. We want to fill that impression or imprint in so that we can now see some um, idea, we can get some idea of what the uh, organism may have looked like uh, during its life. So you can see there is a difference between looking for fossil casts and looking for fossil molds. Either way, what we do have is some really nice detail. And whether we're looking at fossil casts or fossil molds, most of what we're trying to do is to interpret what we're seeing in terms of the living organism. What was it like in life? What did it look like? Um, how might it have moved if it moved? How might it have hunted if it hunted? Did it have a head end? Did it have a tail? Did it have legs? Um, is it sort of an organism that, that it's hard to determine any particular structures on? Uh, what organism does it look most like that's still living today? So what can we compare it to? Maybe make some conclusions about what this um, organism may have been like. Um, when it was alive. Flowing water and biological agents are important to remove the original flesh and the hard parts, which is what creates the impression. It's one of the reasons that we talked about the importance of the substrate being porous, allowing the water to pass through, taking with it um, the important minerals that are going to end up uh, being deposited and create these types of uh, casts. Now, casts do tend to um, be relatively um, restricted in the types of materials. Potentially, they could be anything. 
um, but they tend to be more of certain types of minerals uh, or deposits that we see happening most often. Calcite, for example, is uh, often a mineral that is deposited in these uh, moulds to create some nice casts. Some pyrites, so some iron uh, ores, are also ones that we sometimes find in casts. And um, some very beautiful opal uh, fossil casts have also been found, uh, particularly here in Australia. Some of the, uh, I remember seeing a photo of one of the ancient platypus and the, a fossilised jaw from that particular uh, animal and uh, very impressive they are too. So when you see these sorts of casts, they give you something that you can hold, something that you can look at, something you, you can examine to, in order to try and determine exactly what this particular organism was and, and what its life might have been like. What we want you to do as a little exercise is to contrast mould fossils with cast fossils. So ones that basically are uh, more of an impression versus a uh, deposition. Okay, we've, we've done that uh, in the process of experimentation through creating, say, a, uh, a modeling clay mold and then using a plaster of Paris cast. So this is a nice way to contrast both of these two different types of fossils by seeing how we create the mould in the first place from our original fossil and then in filling that mould with plaster we're able to make a cast and hopefully we're able to retain some of those really important features that characterise that particular organism. We're going to obviously look at a few more examples of both mould fossils and cast fossils and we're going to contrast these with our third type um, which are trace fossils. Now, while mould fossils and cast fossils tend primarily to represent body fossils, so some remnant uh, of the original organism, trace fossils are ones that give us just a, a bit of an indication of what may have been there, and they're going to be the subject of our next video. Thanks for watching.